I have learned how to live by facing adversity. Life always has ups and downs. Lately, our family has been facing some tough times and I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm choosing hope as my next adventure. Uncovering hope is really quite easy because it's always around us, especially out here. I had to have surgery this week to try to help with my anemia. I get very anxious in situations like this and I feel quite vulnerable. I did have a good rest under the general anaesthetic though. But the other thing that we've been facing is that my son has to be tested for leukemia, lymphoma and a whole range of other things. So he had to go into hospital to have surgery as well. He had a bone marrow biopsy. He was very brave. How are you feeling? Uh, um, my brain is like normal, but the rest of my body feels pretty tired. They took bone marrow out of his hip. And now we're just waiting on the results. And we're both recovering well from our surgeries. Regeneration is stimulated by breathing, sleeping, meditating and quiet. If you've been following along with us on our journey, you'll know that my grandmother died a few months ago. She used to make a mean grandma pie and I have been searching for grandma seeds everywhere and I couldn't find any online or anywhere. So my auntie Bonnie actually posted me some grandma seeds. So I'm saving them to plant them for um, the start of next summer so that I get the season right. We've had a little bit of rain lately, but not enough. This is where, this is the pond where basically truffles normally has a little bit of a swim and it's usually full of water, but it's totally dry at the moment. Hope can be uncovered by planting a seedling and watching it grow. This native mint bush was about a tenth of its size when we first planted it almost a year ago. Our native oregano is doing really well and our curry plant is still surviving. Our rosemary bush is thriving in this environment. We've been trying to follow the principles of permaculture to start our food forest. And so we've been observing and interacting with our environment over the last year and a half. And we've also been catching and storing energy with our solar power and our wind turbine. We've also been catching and storing rainwater and our 23,000 litre rainwater tank is now full after six so months. This is our um, leaf catcher for our new tank. So I haven't um, emptied this yet. So I'm interested to see if anything's in here. So I'm just gonna empty it. So the other principles are obtaining a yield and obviously we use the energy and water that we're harvesting and we're also starting to use some of our herbs from our garden as well. see that's all the stuff that it's caught Some of our wattles have survived and are doing quite well. Some have been eaten to pieces by the wildlife. And we've got some bottle brush as well that are still thriving. 
we went out and grabbed ourselves some more seedlings to plant. Some oregano, some lemon thyme, some lemon, lemon verbena, and some more lavender and some mint. We've worked out that lavender grows pretty well here in this weather and also the kangaroos don't seem to want to eat it. So we're just putting this lavender plant in the spot where we had our um, African basil. The African basil did really well through the summer months, but as soon as it started to get cold and the frost came, it just completely died off. There are a lot of rocks under the ground here, so I'm not sure how this lavender is going to go. If you've been following along with us, you'll know that I make cold process handmade soaps and sell them at some shops in um, Brisbane and Tenterfield. And the lavender soaps are really popular and I have a distillery for making my own essential oils but I haven't been game enough to use it yet but I hope to do that one day when I've got lots of lavender plants growing but um, we've also introduced a new range of um, milk baths and the first one is lavender so that they will be available um, for purchasing soon as well. We're just planting the oregano. And now we're just planting the lemon verbena. And now the lemon thyme. So apparently all these herbs with strong flavours or tastes or aromas actually um, keep the pests and the kangaroos from eating them. So let's hope they stay alive. And now the mint. Some people who have been following along with us on our journey have been asking me how did the outhouse end up and did we end up finishing it yet? Well, because of all the health issues that have come up, we haven't been able to finish it yet. So you haven't missed anything, but we will be finishing it soon and we'll be showing people how it turned out. And now we're planting some chives in here in the wheelbarrow with the mint. We ended up getting a little bit of rain straight after we planted these new plants into the garden, which was great timing. And the sound of the water tank filling up is always a hopeful sound. I feel like the world always looks more beautiful after it's rained. And the tadpoles are splashing about in the little rock pools in the creek.
and all the nitrogen and oxygen in the rainwater seems to make the plants grow in front of your eyes. And mint likes to be harvested pretty regularly. Our chives were flattened a bit by the rain, but hopefully they'll come back. The crushed leaves of lemon thyme actually make an excellent mosquito repellent, apparently. So could be quite useful just to rub on your skin while you're out pottering in the garden in the afternoons. And our lavender plants are doing really well. They actually belong to the mint family as well. They've been flowering for the last two or three months now. And these ones are English lavender. English lavenders produce the best essential oil and it's also very expensive. And our rosemary is just loving this rain as well. Rosemary is great to have just as a hedge because as soon as you brush past it, you can smell that beautiful smell and it's so good to cook with. It's very hardy in cool climates. So hopefully this lemon verbena will grow to be about two to three meters high. It's got great flavors to cook with and you can also make herbal teas with it as well. And our oregano is um, also part of the mint family as well. It tastes great dried and put on pizzas. The native Australian mint bush apparently prefers um, getting some mulch in winter to protect its roots. So we might have to try that this time. Puppy. Hello. And here's another wattle tree coming along. And our orange tree is loving this rain as well. Our curry plant is still alive, but it doesn't seem to have grown very much in the last year. And here is some unusual fungus that are growing on um, a log that had fallen down. It looks a bit like an alien, doesn't it? We seem to be getting a lot of thistle bushes popping up around the place. And apparently thistles can spread like wildfire, but I was recently watching a permaculture documentary and it was saying that um, you should let all the weeds um, grow and that it would just naturally replenish the ground eventually. And our loquat is still doing pretty well. And we found a tree that had some European honeybees um, nested inside. The European honeybee was first brought to Australia about 200 years ago for honey production. And it's, they're everywhere now basically, but they do, um, it's a bit controversial how they affect our native bees and wildlife, but um, they are very helpful for pollinating um, gardens and, f and helping farmers. So tonight we're having some sticky Asian glazed chicken thighs and I'm just mixing up the marinade for them now. And I'll also make a mango salsa to go yeah. on top. Temporary toilet. So for the sticky Asian glazed chicken thighs, I'm just, I've just mixed some soy sauce with some apple cider vinegar and I'm adding some garlic now. I'll use this marinade to cover the chicken thighs and just let them sit in the marinade for a few hours before I cook them out on the barbecue. I'm adding some of our native honey to the marinade mix as well. And now I'm just adding some 
dried and ground ginger because I didn't have any fresh and I'm just mixing it up and I'll pour this over the chicken thighs to sit for a while. And while the chicken sits in the marinade, I'm just going to um, get the mango salsa ready as well. So I'm just cutting up some green onions there and some mango into little cubes. I remember growing up next to a few big, huge mango trees and I used to um, gather all the mangoes that had fallen during the day and eat them all the time. It was so good to have fresh mangoes for free all the time. Unfortunately, I don't think the mangoes would survive here because the winters are too cold for mango, I think. This mango salsa has a terrific sweet and spicy tang with a tropical flair. It works well with chicken and seafood and all sorts of dishes. And this salsa actually adds a lot of extra vitamins and minerals to your meal as well. And since um, my son hasn't been too well, he's had a lot of uh, vitamin deficiencies. I've always tried to make sure that I'm trying to provide a healthy and balanced diet so that he can try to get the most um, minerals and vitamins that he can. So I've just diced up some red salad onion and also squeezing the juice from a few limes as well. Now I'm just cutting up some coriander as well. The coriander plant is related to parsley, carrots and celery. And coriander is super healthy for you. It's got lots of antioxidants and it's anti-inflammatory as well. I'll just give it a little bit of a mix up now. And apparently coriander can help with anxiety as well. I think coriander has a refreshing lemony or lime-like flavour and I think it brings great depth to the dish. Now I'm just adding some lime juice to the salsa and I'll give it a bit of a stir. I just love all the beautiful colours that pop in this salsa. I'll just put this away until everything's cooked. We're going to have some corn with and some roast veggies with our chicken and salsa. I think sometimes the sounds of everyday life can also be quite comforting and bring hope as well. The sound of exquisite music can bring hope and the sense of having some sort of progress towards our goals also brings hope. just getting ready to take the gas bottles into town tomorrow to get refilled. What is it puppy? Our nine month old rescue puppy Truffles also reminds me to live life like someone left the gate open.
There must be some creatures in the grass there that give her a bit of a fright. What is it, Poppy? We have a couple of parrots or lorikeets here come to visit us. The playful sounds of the birds brings hope. Hope is the one thing that can get us through the darkest times. And hope is the last thing ever lost. And hope is more than wishful thinking. It's a blend of optimism and willpower. The beautiful thing is that hope can exist even alongside the most difficult situations and emotions. Hope is the belief that your life will be better in the future and that you have the ability to make it happen. I have a degree in psychology and I've been working in mental health for about 20 years now. And there's this thing called hope theory, which is made up of three different things, basically to have goals. So the goals can be big or small, to have agency or willpower. Um, it's like believing that good things will happen because of your actions and having pathways. So if your first pathway doesn't work, then you find a new pathway. Come on, you girl. No. While hope certainly involves our emotions, it's not itself an emotion. Hope is a way of thinking or a state of being. Go on, puppy. So if you're feeling like you're not having a lot of hope, maybe think about your goals as Go being on. exciting challenges and just think of one small step that you can take each day. And just remember that most things of value don't come easily. And sometimes the world can often feel like a dark and difficult place, but there's always a glimmer of hope. After Eli had his bone marrow biopsy, he wasn't able to swim for a while to make sure that he didn't get any infections. I'm making some chimichurri sauce to go on top of our steaks tonight. So basically I'm chopping up the coriander very fine. And normally you would finely chop up some fresh parsley, but I don't have that at the moment. So I've just used some dried parsley and dried oregano. 
I'm also adding some finely diced garlic. This sauce tastes best if you make it about one to two hours before serving. You keep it in the fridge to let all the flavors mingle together and get to know each other. So I'm just adding some olive oil. And I'm just adding some Worcestershire sauce. So you could use red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar or some other type of vinegar as well. And now to add some paprika. And a little bit of chili powder or chili flakes or chopped chilies if you like that. We've had these potatoes roasting in the barbecue for the last hour and I'm just going to cut them up and put some natural yogurt inside them. You could use sour cream if you like, but that's obviously not as healthy as natural yogurt. And I'm just adding some bacon bits that I've just fried. Plus some spring onions or green onions on top and a bit of salt and pepper as well. And now I'm just reawakening the chimichurri sauce for the steaks. This is all smelling so good. Paul got me some beautiful flowers and a lovely card for Valentine's Day. Witnessing and experiencing acts of love, goodness and kindness also gives me hope. Thanks for watching and chat to you next time.